Hi y'all, welcome to my channel. This is the Survivor's Guide to Life. My name is Jessica Lang. If this is your first time here, welcome. This channel is dedicated to all things related to trauma, the brain, and healing. So if that's your jam, go right ahead and click that subscribe button so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. And while you're at it, jump on over to Instagram where the conversation continues and talk about all things mental health, um, share motivational quotes, focus on self-esteem, self-care. So if that's also your jam, go ahead and follow me there on Instagram. I'm also trying to get to that magical 10,000 likes so that I can get the swipe up feature and have everything nice and interconnected and just makes life a lot easier. So continuing on with Unpacking the DSM PTSD Edition. Um, I'm going to go through the next category and this is all about avoidance. Now the thing about avoidance is that we all struggle with this, whether it's um, not looking at uh, our bank accounts because we are afraid to see how much or how little we have in there, or it is avoiding um, certain people, avoiding difficult conversations. Avoidance unfortunately is a coping mechanism that most of us use. Um, if not all of us use at some point in our life and avoidance in and of itself is not a bad thing it's in fact it can be a very useful um, and powerful coping strategy that can actually benefit you um, if it's used with some awareness and some intent so for example if your boss is maybe getting on your case about something and um, <laughs> you are not in such a great mood and you're worried you're gonna lose your cool you might avoid your boss just so you can keep your cool right um so like in that instance it is okay to use avoidance as like a smart coping strategy but what you don't want to do is use it a for everything and also um when you use avoidance as a coping strategy oftentimes you have really tense i don't know why i'm saying you because it's really us all of us all of us do it um it's something that is causing a significant amount of distress or um worry or anxiety whatever word you want to use and so we're using this to cope so that we can get through our day um, but you still need to do something with those feelings you can't continuously stuff your feelings and your emotions down because that ends up getting trapped in the body and I talk about this all the time with the stress response system and how trauma gets stored in the body um, the stress response system, right you have an activation you go up you go back down that's the natural response that's how the body heals right you get upset you come back down to your baseline, that's the resolution. But when you're constantly stopping yourself midway, you get triggered and you stop yourself, you cut yourself off, and so you think you're okay, you think you've resolved it, but you've never really addressed it, so you're just kind of hanging out up here, and maybe you start trickling down a little bit, and then something else happens, and you get triggered up here again. Rather than allowing for the natural cycle to complete itself, you interrupt the, the cycle, and that's where that's where the anxiety, that's where the trauma gets stored into your stored in your body and you have difficulties later. Okay, so I'm going to go through, I'm going to read in the DSM what avoidance is. This is what the DSM-5, the current edition of the DSM, when I'm recording this video in 2019, says about avoidance um, as a symptom of post-traumatic stress disorder. Persistent avoidance of stimuli associated with the traumatic event or events beginning after the traumatic event or events has occurred, as evidenced by one or more, sorry, as evidenced by one or both of the following. Number one, avoidance of or efforts to avoid distressing memories, thoughts, or feelings about or closely associated with the traumatic event or events. Number two, avoidance of or efforts to avoid external reminders, so people, places, conversations, activities, objects, situations, that arouse, dist that arouse distressing memories, thoughts, or feelings about or closely associated with a traumatic event or events. So that was for post-traumatic stress disorder for adults. In kids, it's a little bit different. So for children six years and under, this is what post-traumatic, uh, this is what avoidance looks like it under the post-traumatic stress disorder category. So it's category C. One or more of the following symptoms representing either persistent avoidance of stimuli associated with the traumatic event or events or negative alterations in cognition and mood associated with the traumatic event or events must be present beginning after the events or worsening after the events. Number one, avoidance of or efforts to avoid activities, places, or physical reminders that arouse recollections of the traumatic events Number two, 
avoidance of or efforts to avoid people, conversations, or interpersonal situations that arouse recollections of the traumatic events. Part of, um, also under this category, but under like a separate heading, is negative alterations in cognitions. So, number three, substantially increased frequency of negative emotional states, fear, guilt, sadness, shame, confusion. Number four, markedly diminished interest or participation in significant activities, including constriction of play. Number five, socially withdrawn behavior. And number six, persistent reduction in expression of positive emotions. So what's interesting um, in the DSM, what they've done is there's actually a separate component. It's a separate category for adults where they talk about the um, different, the change in cognition. But in children, they noted that this change in cognition um, is related to avoidance. Um, and again, I'm going to do this later when I start talking about different mental health disorders that mimic post-traumatic stress disorder and can often get um, misdiagnosed as the primary mental health concern um, when trauma is not taken into account. So as I've been reading the DSM and sharing with you what post-traumatic stress disorder is in children and adults, if you're interested, comment down below and let me know if you want me to do a specific video on PTSD in children. Um, a lot of times, um, uh, a lot of the symptoms do overlap but it just can the presentation often looks very different in children and uh in children than it does in adults and so if you want to if you want to learn more about that then just comment down below let me know and then i'll do a video specifically about post-traumatic stress in children for now i'm still going to focus this on adults but i still like to read the difference just in case you have kids or you know somebody who who has a child who's maybe experienced some trauma and is having some of this um you're seeing some of this so that you can maybe suggest that they get some professional help to help their child um okay so back to the topic of avoidance so like i said before avoidance in and of, in and of itself is not bad and it can be it can be a great resource and a great coping strategy to use in the short term but when you use it as your primary method of coping it can actually lead to increased um difficulties later on and more more problems um, so that's why you want to be become more intentional, more aware, more mindful with the choices that you make and so that you can feel more empowered and feel more in control. So one of the biggest things, one of the biggest drivers for avoidance is that fear, is that anxiety. And so one of the tips I have for you if this is something that you're struggling with is really to get to the root of what this fear is. What is behind the fear? What are you worried about? Um, are you worried about losing control? Are you worried that if you um, go through the depths or like really look deeply you know, into what's going on that you'll be incredibly sad um, or you'll cry forever? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oftentimes there's just some fear that, the, yeah, the, that this fear will be all consuming, right? That if you go down the rabbit hole, hole, sorry, if you go down the rabbit hole, you won't be able to come out. Um, and so the avoidance can lead to self-destructive behavior, such as alcohol abuse or drug abuse, risky sex, like I talked about in a video about self-destructive behavior and impulsivity. And so that's one reason that you really want to get a handle on getting to the root cause of your avoidance. Um, another one, um, especially related to kind of self-esteem and, and self-worth, is setting boundaries or having difficult conversations with people. Um, a lot of survivors, and it's related to the freeze mechanism actually, is um, have trouble kind of standing up for themselves because they don't want people to, to not like them or they're worried that what people, someone else is going to say. Um, so again, this is all that, that fear and that worry that gets into play. So then they rather just go along to get along, as we say, and that ends up putting their needs in the, uh, sorry, and when you do that, you put your needs on the back burner. Um, and a lot of people like they find their identity um, in kind of servicing others or like doing things for other people but this often can be at the detriment to yourself um, it's not a bad thing to take care of other people in fact it's healthy it's natural but it should be a two-way street right it should be a mutually beneficial relationship it shouldn't just be you putting in all the legwork and you doing whatever somebody else says because you're afraid uh, what's going to happen if you don't so again it's looking at what's behind it it's not the it's not what's on the top it's what's behind it and that's why I talk about being more intentional and being more aware of what you're doing that why because 
if you're doing it because you're afraid of what someone's gonna say or you're afraid they won't like you that's not taking care of yourself right and you want to make sure that you're taking care of yourself because you deserve to be happy as well you deserve to be t nurtured and loved and taken care of my tip for you if you're struggling with with avoidance is to really dive in deep and try to figure out what's that fear what are you afraid of what's holding you back um, and if you so and if you feel so inclined comment down below and share with us what is something that you're struggling with what are you avoiding what are you afraid of let's have a conversation share some tips and wisdom with each other let's make this interactive um, if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and i will see you all tomorrow <laughs>